Hey y'all, it's Day or De La Soul and it is Fibroid Awareness Month and a lot of you guys know that I dealt with fibroids. I did um, a two-part video talking about my experience. It was before and after I had surgery and I just thought, you know, it would be a great time to go ahead and do a third part. Hologic, which is the home of the Assessa treatment um, and MyoShore to treat fibroids, they actually reached out to me to partner for a video and I was like, well, it's a sign. Let me go ahead and do another update on what's been going on because I see, I see you guys' questions and give you guys an update um, since I'm partnering with them for this video. I gotta start this off with a disclaimer. If you are not a licensed physician and you don't have that individual person that you're talking to patient chart and you have not seen that person, don't be in the comments telling them what to do with their body. By all means, like this is a place to share what you've done, what worked, what didn't work, what your experience was, like, whether it was horrible, whether it was good, share it. Share your experience, but don't be in here telling people what to do. The truth of the matter is that fibroids is a very underfunded and under researched and understudied medical issue. Please be mindful of that. Um, don't come in here dropping unproven facts and doing telling people what to do. Don't be shaming people about their diet because I will block and delete the comments. I don't have a problem with doing that. But again, by all means, please share your experience, what you went through, and all that stuff because a lot of women go through fibroids. They say that like nearly 80% of women. Um, over the age of 50 will end up having fibroids at some point in their lifetime. Um, black women are disproportionately affected by it. I think the rate is like th three times more likely to experience it. So when I'm talking to black women about this, it's because I am a black woman and we're disproportionately affected. I'm not excluding anybody. I'm not trying to doubt any other race. Like it's just that that's though that is a fact. So if I'm gearing it towards black women and you are non-black, there's no offense to you. Welcome to the club. <laughs> we all dealing with the same issue. That's just who my audience is and that's who I am as a person and before I get into my update one more thing I do want to let you guys know about some resources because I'm sure everybody's here trying to you know get advice um, I'm not a licensed professional I can only talk about my experience so if you do want some help from some actual professionals there is a website called knowyouryou.com you can go on there and it's it's just so much stuff they can help you get ready for doctor's appointments they have information about different treatments um, I personally had an open myomectomy um, but they have it's the laparoscopic one which is minimally invasive where they go through and make little teeny incisions to kind of I think they heat the fibroids up um to kind of like I don't know what the word is immobilize them demobilize them something like that but they go through and they just kind of do it that way whereas I had an open myomectomy where somebody actually went in I have a long c-section scar which I'll get into um and took mine out but again the website is knowyouryou.com you can go on there and see what I'm talking about learn about different types of ways to treat it they also have a quiz you can do if you're kind of like I don't know if I have fibroids or any abnormally there's a very detailed quiz I took it myself just to kind of see what it was like once you took the quiz it gave you some things to think about some information based off of how you answer the questions um, it also gave a guide on scheduling your appointment um, what to think about before you get to your appointment like I know it was asking like track your periods go ahead and start writing down the days how long it was lasting whether you were having clotting cramping experience where do you feel your cramps your back your lower leg um, or your lower back and your leg it just got you thinking about you know what things to bring to your actual doctor and it even takes it a step further by giving you actual like um, starter conversations for your doctor because I know it's very intimidating it gives you like things for people who are nervous or don't know what to say you can screenshot them and take them to your appointment it also gives you follow-up questions to ask like it's, it's just it helps you walk through your entire appointment so I strongly suggest that website in terms of learning about different treatment options getting ready for the doctor actually going to the doctor and then follow-up questions so with that being said I know this was a kind of a long intro I'm gonna get into what's going on with me Okay, so since my second video, well, not even since my second, but throughout this whole, whole ordeal, um, I've been super paranoid about my fibroids growing. Um, just to give a back step um, for anybody who didn't see the other videos, um, I had, how many did I have? I had like 18 fibroids. Um, my biggest one was like the size of like a cantaloupe and I am 129 pounds. I'm a little thing. So my stomach was huge. My uterus uh, was the size of someone who was six to seven months pregnant. Um, and I, yeah, it was, it was a mess. I had an open myomectomy and I was down for six weeks. After I had my surgery, I did have a, a sonogram um, about three months later just to go in there and make sure everything was healing properly so initially they the my doctor had a sauna sonographer i think is what they're called or ultrasound technician but she saw three um but then when i came back again for my six month follow-up she had me do another sonogram because she said that her 
original one was kind of sloppy and um when she went back and was like reviewing i guess the film or whatever it's called she thought she saw a fourth one um and back up a little bit when i had my surgery we had a conversation that if they were inside of my uterus and it did not like pose any kind of threat to fertility we were going to leave them alone so when she was in there she made a conscious decision to leave the ones in my uterus alone because they were so so tiny and she said that from her professional opinion she didn't see that they posed a threat to fertility and she was like that's just one of those things where you know we'll address it if it um, becomes an issue and when i went back and had the second one i did have four in there one of them is like right behind the other one so it was kind of hard to see uh went back and had a third one it wasn't there also when i went back and had my third one um i think the original sizes for them were like 1.6 millimeters or centimeters they were very small um to put it on a um a visual they were smaller than a cheerio maybe the size of a pea um but they were like 1.6 and 1.8 when i went back the second time they were 1.4 or 1.2 so they were shrinking um, and then when I went back the third time, they had shrunk again and they were all like 1.2 and 1.1 uh, 1 or something. They, they just were consistently shrinking. So everything, you know, appeared to be good. Um, fast forward to this year, um, I actually just recently went and got another sonogram because I was having irregular periods. I started having my period every three weeks like clockwork, which is not normal for me. Mine was normally every 28 days I would have my period, like like literally like clockwork. I come in on 28th or 29th day. <laughs> but um, I started having them every three weeks. Um, I was starting to like cramp and just feel tired and it's like, oh my God, I think they're growing in their back. So I went to another doctor's appointment um came back they did grow a little bit uh they were 1.4 again and i think 1.7 but she went through and did my blood work and checked everything out did the sonogram again and the issue was for me that we kind of concluded was i had a very stressful uh month so with that being said i'm just kind of attributing my fibroid situations to stress because like i said when i went to the doctor this was in april i went to the doctor in july 12th or 13th was my appointment everything was kind of like normal and back out um she did say that my cortisone levels were slightly elevated which again is your stress hormone is it cortisone or cortisol cortisol because cortisone is definitely the itch cream but um that's what kind of is my update so now you guys kind of know what's going on with me i still have three or four sometimes the fourth one doesn't show up on the um sign of not they're still super small it's been two at least two years since i've had surgery oh my god that flew by so fast so my periods are back now back to normal i scheduled that appointment in june and was able to see her in july and of course <laughs> my period went right back to normal i had my period on the 29th day from my last one so i've been taking these um my happy flows called a period a better period period <laughs> vitamins um they are for pms relief hormone balance and an energy boost i was not taking those um from april to may i started again taking them in june i can't prove that they help my period come back around but or come back to normal but i started taking them again here's a whole empty bottle i just finished so yeah my doctor told me you know to make sure i take probiotics all the time just to help with like gut health in general um and i do cbd as well so i'll do like um delta a and like uh drips or drops tinctures whatever they're called i do all of that that kind of helps me with stress management um as far as cbd and then i have like i said this for like the hormone balance and then um the probiotics just to help with like digestion and just kind of gut health and that that's really the only things that i say i can say that i've done consistently i haven't done any of these teas even though somebody stole my picture and put them on ebay i haven't done anything i haven't done any kind of plant-based diets like none of that uh since i've had surgery and i feel like you know i'm having a pretty good recovery experience of course they always remind you when you go in like there's like a i think 30 to 40 percent chance that your fibroids can come back um, but that's that's what I'm doing because I know a lot of people want to know like what is, what is your lifestyle update? What are you doing now? So after I had surgery um, During the first like two weeks I lost a whole bunch of weight and I went from 139 pounds to 114 pounds I was super skinny. I didn't really like it um, But then I gained my weight back and I got all the way back up to like I want to say like 135 and kind of teetered around then um and you know summer came and it was time for me to get get my stuff together and now i'm back at like 129 i feel like 129 128 is like my normal like content happy weight 
So um, another question people were asking was about my scar. When I first did my surgery, you guys can go back and look. My scar was like, you couldn't see. It just looked like a regular like crease in my skin like just like a regular little wherever you see a fold it looked regular it looked like that for like the first year for sure around like the 18 month mark because i specifically remember i went to my third sonogram and she looked at my scar because she was very proud <laughs> of how good she did my scar it was fine then all of a sudden i don't know i don't know again if it was stress or what it started hurting it started becoming real tender down there again just at the scar site though um, like superficially the scar not inside or anything and then it started getting puffy and then it started keloiding and i called her and let her know what was going on she was shocked but she said it happens um it's weird because i don't have any other keloids on my body um except for there um and she referred me to a dermatologist and i'm currently getting injections in my scar on the right side um it's really flat and i'm trying to get it all to look like that on like this left side it's kind of like bubbly a little bit it was like that but a lot lot bigger in the center and it was like almost all the way across like it was it was bad like i was so self-conscious about it it had got to the point where if i had on leggings you can kind of see it like bulging a little bit in my leggings but as you can see this is like significantly different so the injections that i get are working i've done three injections they are very 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 painful like the first time i cried on the table but it's worth it the first time i had my injections it like reduced by like half like they they really work my final thing that i want to encourage people to do is if you're not satisfied with your level of care that you're getting from your doctor if you are able to and your insurance and funds allow it please shop doctors like don't feel like you have to be stuck with somebody just because you've been going with going to them for so long because a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about fibroids because they're dismissed by their medical professionals like a lot of women assume they just have to have a hysterectomy when they really don't a lot of women think that their insurance won't cover it some insurances won't cover it but you can find doctors who who will have the insurance decline but will fight for you like for example when i first found out that there was an issue I was at my primary care physician giving a physical they denied my MRI and she was like hell no <laughs> like we're gonna have this MRI there are doctors out here that do care and that want to provide relief that know what they're doing and so I encourage people to shop around and that's pretty much it for this video um if you guys think of some more questions feel free to let me know again chime in in the comments I also want to encourage you guys to talk to your family your friends whoever if you are going through this talk to people about it I have noticed that I am seeing it more on TV like I saw somebody from Real Housewives of Atlanta I'm um, Sheree she was dealing with it I see there's um, a medication out now that's being advertised on TV for it um, again we got the fibroid awareness month I've been seeing stuff all over my timeline over that and there's some more news coverage I actually made uh, like I think it was CSNBC um, I had an article on that there are like a lot of people talking about it now so I want to encourage like I see the media doing it but on a personal level we need to do it and I feel like the more we talk about it the more attention it'll get the more people will be donating the funds Funding, the more they can you know gain the funding because it's something that people are really concerned about if you guys are inclined go ahead share your stories in the next comments if you have any questions for me let me know um, make sure you guys watch the first two videos because I get into a lot of detail about you know what my experience was like what was my recovery like which was I had a really smooth recovery because a lot of people come on YouTube to tell horror stories if you want to hear like some more like some positive and like somebody that had a decent experience go back and watch um, my videos on that um but yeah thank you guys for tuning in if you have any questions i will be talking to you in the comments and yeah goodbye